So looking at the packet that I passed out to you yesterday, we have some release test questions. In these release test questions, what, what I, when I say release test questions, these are questions that were on the um, state air assessment. That's the test that you have to take at the end of Algebra 1. And you have to pass that test in order to graduate. So when I say these are release test questions, these were questions that were on previous tests. And I chose them because um, these questions are the exact same questions um, that what I've been teaching you covers, okay? So I wanted you to see that. I'm not just wasting your time teaching you this. This is what they expect you to know for the state test. Does that make sense? Okay, so we have... To complete the first table, um, to show that f of x is a function. So what does it mean? This all goes back to vocabulary. What does it mean to say that something is a function? To say that it is a function, that means that each input, and we'll type this out here. If you want to write it down in your notes, that would be a great idea. Each input misspelled it, input, is paired with exactly one output. That's what it means to be a function. Each x value gets paired with exactly one y value. So what that means in terms of this problem, if I have negative 1, and 6, and then my y value is negative 8. I want to list three different x values, or if I do list the same x value twice, it has to be paired with the exact same y value. So if I was to put negative 1 here, what would have to go here in order for this to be a function? If I put negative 1 here, I would have to put negative 8 here because this input of negative 1 has to be paired with the exact same output. Does that make sense? If I didn't want to use negative 1, if I used any number other than negative 1 or 6, then I could put any number in the world that I wanted there and it wouldn't matter because now I have negative 1 being paired with something. What do you want to put here? We could put any number we want. Negative 20. Okay. I can put any number I want here except negative 1. Because if I put negative 1 here, it's not going to be a function because negative 1 is paired with negative 20 and then with negative 8. Does that make sense? Okay, so what could I put here? 4. Perfect. Since I put a 4 here and not a 6, I can put any number in the world that I want here. What do you want to put there? 12. Okay, so now looking over here at this part, for g of x, we want it to not be a function. So what we want is to have two different x values or two of the same x values paired with two different y's. So if I put negative 1 here, I can put any number I want in the world here except negative 8. So let's just put, again, negative 20 and 12. So it's not a function because negative 1 is paired with negative 20 and negative 8. This is a function because each x value is paired with exactly one y. All right, looking at the next one, we talked about function notation. This is just a fancy way of saying plug in an, a 12 for x and solve. So I'm looking at just this part, and I'm going to plug in x, uh, 12 for x and solve. So 2 thirds times 12 plus 3. Well, 2 thirds of 12 we know is 8. And what is 8 plus 3? 11. You guys remember how to do this? Just kind of ignore this. When people write it out, then they always start trying to divide both sides by 12. Just kind of ignore it and realize that all this is saying is that I'm replacing the x with 12. All right. This is primarily a vocabulary question. 
If you know the vocabulary that I have posted on Google Classroom, I'll show that to you here. Um, it's under Friday. You've got the Quizlet. If you study the Quizlet and you know that vocabulary, then this question is so easy. If you don't know the vocabulary, this question is impossible. It says, which graph represents a function? Well, really quickly, a function passes the vertical line test, right? And what do I mean when I say it passes the vertical line test? You got it. Passes through how many points at a time? One. If it only passes through one, I just make up my imaginary line here and I drag it across and it only passes through one point at a time, then it's a function. So which one of these is not a function? Which one would fail the vertical line test? If I had a vertical line here, which one would it pass through two points at a time? B. Exactly. So we know this is not a function because see it passes through here and here at the same time. Not a function. So we automatically process of elimination ruled out B because it says which graph represents a function. Then it goes on to say whose domain, what's domain? The domain is the X values, right? Whose X values is the set of non-negative real numbers. Well, what are non-negative numbers? Just above zero. Perfect. So we're looking for X values above zero. Looky here. I have X values below zero and X values above zero. So rule that one out. Looking at this one, we have x values below zero. So we can rule that one out. So the correct answer has to be C. This is a function. It passes the vertical line test. A vertical line only passes through one point at a time. And the domain or the x values, all of these are positive numbers. They're above zero. They're non-negatives. Does that make sense? All right, looking at this next one, it says, what is the minimum value of the function? Well, there is this handy dandy little feature known as Desmos that you guys are permitted to use on the state test and you're permitted to use it on my test. And anytime that you want, you go to desmos.com and we're going to type in this function five times X minus two. Squared, oops, not the at symbol, squared, what was the rest of it? Plus three. All right, and it asks for the minimum value. What do you think it's asking for when it says to find the minimum? The lowest point on the graph. Where is the lowest point on this graph? It's right here at three. Perfect. So the minimum value is... Three. This next one is very similar to that f of 12 that we did up there. We have a function f of n equals 7n plus 96. So basically what it's asking you to do is find f of 0 and to find f of 5. Well, what would I do to find f of 0? Plug in a 0 in place of the n, right? I replace this n with a 0, so I've got to come over here and replace this n with a 0. 7 times 0 plus 96. Well, what's 7 times 0? Zero? 0 plus 96 is... 96. All right, so what am I going to do for f of 5? Mm -hmm. And 7 times 5, I know, is 35. 35 plus 96 is 
130, 131. Okay, so the next one's a little bit different. We've got to work backwards. This time we know that it's equal to 145, but we don't know what n is. But that's okay because we know how to solve a system of, or not a system, but a, an equation, right? We know how to solve this equation. What would I do to solve this equation? First, I've got to get rid of this positive 96. How do I get rid of a positive 96? I subtract it from both sides. Perfect. So I have 7n plus 96 minus 96. The whole reason I did that, property of equality says to do it to both sides, but here it is zero. So now I'm just left with 7n, 145 minus 96. We can always go over here. 145 minus 96 is 49. And we know that what number times 7 gives me 49? This is a perfect square. 7 times 7 is 49. Yes, perfect. So n equals 7. So again, we just plugged this in on this value in for n, <laughs> i n for n, and we solve, and here we set it equal to the 145 and solved for the variable. All right, we have some values for a function table. Which statement best describes the function? Now, we're trying to determine if it's linear or nonlinear by looking at this. Well, we know that in order for something to be linear, it has to be going at the exact same, at a constant rate. It has to be increasing. So look what it increased by here. We increased by 2. Well, here we only increased by 1. So whatever it increased by here should be doubled what it increased by from here to here if it's linear. Well, what did it go up by here? 25, and then I add, they added a, another 25. Hmm, that's not good. 25 is not double 25, is it? If this would have been 50, then we could have said, oh, well, 50 over 2 is the same as 25 over 1. So, yeah, it's linear. But because it's not increasing by a constant amount, it is nonlinear. not increasing, the f of x does not increase by a constant amount compared to the x values. Okay, the next one says, what is the domain of the function? Again, we know the domain is what? x or y's? It's my x values, yes. So, looking at my x values on the graph, where does it start? Mm-hmm, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So, which one of these tell me that I'm looking for x is bigger than negative 4? A, B, C, or D? A, I'm looking for values of x that are greater than or equal to, because it does include this point, negative 4. Just looking at the x values, because that's what the word domain means. Look at the x values. All right, what is the maximum of this function? Well, we just talked about the minimum in a previous problem, so what do you think the maximum is? Again, it's 3. It's the highest point on the graph. The highest point of this function is 3. And then our last one is very similar to that f of 12, that f of n. This time we have f of negative 2. So what am I going to do to solve this? Perfect. Now. I believe this is taught in 8th grade, maybe even 7th grade, I don't know, but I'll go over it again this year. But just to remind you, if you didn't have a calculator to do this for you, when I have a negative exponent, that's the same thing as writing 1 over 
2 to the positive 2 power. Since it's negative, that tells me to drop it to the denominator and make it positive. Well, what's 2 squared? 2 times 2 is 4. Yes. So this is equal to 1 fourth. So I have 1 fourth plus 3. Well, we know that 1 fourth is the same as what decimal? Zero point two five. Think about quarters. There's four quarters in a dollar. A quarter's worth twenty five cents. So, what is my answer? Again, even though I would love for you to have this memorized, if you don't, or if you're doubting yourself and you want to double check, you have the calculator. So, just plug it in. Two raised to the negative two power plus three equals 3.25. So there are the released air test questions. These will be on the test. Maybe not all of them, but definitely make sure you understand this. If you don't, let me know. And again, I want to remind you that on Friday, if you click on the Friday at one o'clock in the afternoon, I have a class meeting scheduled. Okay, so you can join me virtually at one o'clock. If you're looking back over these and something didn't make sense and you're like, well, how in the world should come up with that? You can A, send me an email or B, join virtually and ask me because good chance, there's a good chance that if you don't understand it, somebody else doesn't either. So last night you were supposed to watch part one of the review and fill in the questions on your study guide. If you haven't done that yet, now would be a great time to do that. You have part two to do tonight, which is only eight minutes. It's really short. Then again, on Friday, you need to complete 10 Alex topics. You have your vocabulary to study. You have the meet scheduled at one o'clock if you want to ask me questions. This is not required. It's not mandatory, but I highly encourage you to get on there. It's a great way just to study and your test will be Monday. You have to join me virtually Monday using the meet link at your scheduled class time from 8 59 to 9 50. If for some reason you oversleep and you don't wake up, don't just not do it. Send me an email and I can let you join. I have two other classes that will be taking the test so you can join during um, fifth period at 1215 or you can join me during seventh period at 203. So please don't just if you over I would I prefer that you do it during your scheduled time but if you don't if you oversleep again don't just not do it because that's a zero. Send me an email and I will send you another link and you can join me virtually at some point during the day. I realize it's not real fair that they're in school taking it, you guys are at home taking it, but I don't know what else to do. I don't want to wait and next week, you know, you have to take it the week after Thanksgiving, after you've had all that time to forget it. I want you to take it while it's still fresh in your mind, okay? So please make sure that you do that.